Ramble. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. You've got Becky. Ariel. (laughs) Oh, you got Maggie. (laughs) And Rachel. Becky, you're just pointing at your screen, which means you're pointing at all of us. I'm going, I'm like, all right, so I just did me. So the next one. I'm pretty sure when Keith does it, he does everybody. We're our own people. So I thought we should introduce ourselves, but I guess I was incorrect. Um, So you got Becky, you got Ariel, you got Maggie, you got Rachel. (laughs) Miles is hiding like the little podcast gremlin he is. How's everyone doing? Monday morning. Monday morning. Coming off a hot weekend. Yeah. I started my morning off with the new Taylor Swift album. (gasps) What does everyone think? I haven't yet. How is it? Oh, you haven't? It's an album. You didn't like it? It's an album. Someone someone sings and there is music. I really like it. I think it's really good. I think that she does really good storytelling in this one. I think it's cute. And I Mm. didn't really listen to Taylor Swift growing up or her past albums because I didn't really like her pop pop. But this one's like an indie folk. I liked it. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. Uh, I loved her early country music. Uh, And then, and 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 still listen to it. Still listen to it. You know, there's like uh, Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. uh, And then there's the one about like the rain. I don't even know. The rain. (laughs) But I know which album. Hits me where I live, you know, so I love Taylor Swift. But I have not heard it yet. Ooh, you should listen. I don't know if you'll like it. Well, I could put it on for Wes to go to sleep too. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, is it is it that kind of music? It's like indie it's, folk. Yeah, because yeah. I like dancey T Swift. You know, me too. like mm-hmm. late night at the wedding. Everyone knows the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. loud. Dance a lot. I would say this is her like this is like her anti earworm, anti top forty album. Like none of the songs will be on the radio unless the radio is really desperate. They're just not like radio songs. They're just like drive in your car, Mm -hmm. lay on your bed. I love that Becky's starting beef with Taylor Swift right now. (laughs) I know. I know. Not starting beef. Just an opinion. I feel like first aid kit is my drive in music. So what did you guys do this weekend? We didn't do much. We just kind of relaxed by the pool. It was just a nice like unplug Turn our brains off for a little bit weekend. Uh, Zach and I went on yet another bike ride, which was a lot longer this time, a lot sweatier. We were like kind of going downhill. We went from the Palisades all the way down to Playa del Rey. And we were going downhill and Zach and I got down and we got off our bikes. And I was like, wow, that was really easy. And then on the way up, it was slightly inclined and we were just dripping wet with sweat. (laughs) It was it was it was something, but it was really fun. It was Zach's birthday actually on Sunday. We went to a park and cut cake, and the office actually organized a delivery of a cat's themed birthday cake. I and saw that on Instagram. It's so oh funny. my god, it's so oh funny. But I know I I followed Zach on like the morning walk with Bowie because. Um, It was being delivered and I was like, why don't we go this way? He's like, why are you on my walk this morning? Because Zach usually will do the morning and then I'll do the afternoon when I get back home from work. Um, So he's like, why are you even here? Why are you dictating the path? And I was like trying to surprise (laughs) him. (laughs) But it all worked out. It was really cute. And then we saw a couple friends and cut cake and it was really nice. Yeah, it was low key. So um, this past weekend and in the weeks since the podcast has come out, we have gotten a bajillion emails. People are listening. People are commenting. It is crazy. It's kind of weird, but also like wildly fun. Wildly fun. (laughs) Wildly fun. (laughs) I remember last week uh, I was talking about my friend Becca and apparently she texted Ned and was like, I don't remember you bringing tequila to the party. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is this is coming full circle. What's going on? It's so cute. I have like friends from high school listening in too. And even my mom, she was just like, I heard you talk about me on your podcast. But it's <laughs> so overwhelming to hear that so many people are listening and are engaging with us. And we love reading your emails. So please, please, please keep sending them. And especially the dog and cat pictures. Those are so <laughs> stinking cute. And people are making the cutest fan art. And I'm like, ah. It's fan art just for us. The boys aren't even in it. Usually (laughs) we're in fan art together. 
I love it. But I'm just going to dive right into the email from Jamie. Do it. Jamie says, hey there, ladies. I'm really enjoying the podcast and I love hearing about your differences and your lives. I was wondering what such sex education was like in the U.S. when you were young compared to my experience in New Zealand. Thanks if you give this a read. Spicy. I don't think we can compare it to New Zealand because none of us went to high school in New Zealand. (laughs) I want to know what sex education is like in New Zealand. Considering how they're handling COVID, I'm sure it's like everything that the U.S. is doing wrong, New Zealand is doing correctly. They probably actually have sex education. Yeah, Yeah, probably. (laughs) That of abstinence only education. And that's crazy that you guys, Ariel went to private. Correct. Uh-huh. I went to private, but I mean, I went to public uh, up to up to high school. And yeah. so not both of you went to non-religious schools. Mm-hmm. I oh, went yeah, to public went school, to baby. School. So that's weird that you were taught abstinence only educate like sex education. I find so, that. So Becky, you were taught abstinence only. Oh, yeah. That's like the standard for health in, in the United States. <laughs> that's like the baseline for education. Yeah, K through 12. I thought that I was, I thought that at least at public education, they would at least share about like contraceptives because that was a huge no no at all girls Catholic high school. Like, we're not even going to talk about sex because you guys aren't having sex until after you're married. We had like the teacher from Mean Girls slapping the board, being like, if you have sex, you will get chlamydia and die. Exactly. Now, watch this woman give birth. Oh my gosh. Do you guys remember the video of the woman giving <clears throat> birth? The miracle I of life. I was baby. Watch Being, that. No? I feel well, like Ariel, you lived it. I, well, yeah, I lived it. Well, yeah, but. Ariel and Rachel I mean, have lived in, it. When I was in middle school, I mean, we had. Wait, so, okay. So, so every single one of you had abstinence only education. Rachel, mm-hmm. you where did you grow up? Tennessee. So, Tennessee, they're well, big, yeah, okay. big Bible belt, big abstinence pushers. Okay, so. Public school in Tennessee, public school in Illinois, Catholic school in California, Texas. Uh, you know, honestly, <clears throat> we had health class, and I remember talking about. Uh, I remember talking about sexually transmitted diseases, but I don't remember. I don't remember it being abstinence only, like solely abstinence <clears throat> only. Yeah, um, I mean, maybe, maybe wh- when did you guys learn, like, when did you have sex ed? Was it high school or was it middle school? I feel like mine was high school because really? I was like till eighth grade. And I think we were a little too young in their eyes to be talking about anything like that. But they paired yeah. like uh, drunk driving, healthy eating and like nutrition with sex ed. So it wasn't an entire, um, yeah. mm-hmm. it was an entire course. And I feel like it can be. There's just so yeah. many different yeah. ways that you can go into sex education and yeah. Yeah. they went Maybe into just, none of them. I wonder if I just missed out on sex ed completely. Mine was like health class by a gym teacher. But sex ed is not when each of you learned about sex, right? <clears throat> Do you remember when you learned about sex? So I I learned from my older sister, surprisingly. I remember I was like sticking my finger into a plum and like we were sitting at our dining or like our dining table and my sister just goes, ew, do you know what you're doing? And I was like, what? And she's just like, that's <laughs> how babies are made. And I was what? like, huh? With plums? Like, wow. With a plum. How much older is your sister? With a plum. She's only three years older than me. But, but then I remember. The metaphor advanced. I know. I was like, like really call me by your name. I thought that that she was making it up and I was just so grossed out paired with going to Catholic school learning that you're only supposed to do that like after you get married I was just so horrified and I remember my mom was like Aunt Tara's pregnant isn't that beautiful and I was like and like anytime I'd look at pregnant women I was like I know what you did for like years (laughs) I know what you did obviously that changed after I mean that's what Maggie said to me when I told her I was pregnant She's like, exactly. I know what you did. I know, like, what, I know you what you did. did. And I, I just had a very vivid imagination. And I was just like, I can't believe people do things like that. That is crazy. So funny. That's I don't even think I thought about sex until like college. I remember, <laughs> I remember I was in middle school and I had like a middle school boyfriend. And you guys know what middle school boyfriends are like. They're like, well, at least for, for me, it was like, oh my God, they're holding hands. You know, like, oh, my God, like he would come over to 
my house on Friday afternoons and we would watch movies or something with like my friends. And, uh, and I remember there was, there was like pressure to, to, uh, to French kiss him. And I had never done it before. And it, and I was very, very nervous. And so I basically like, we went into my, uh, like our guest bedroom, uh, which is like upstairs and all of my friends were there not like in the bedroom, but they were like downstairs and they're like, oh, they're clearly like, they're, they're French kissing right now. Um, and I couldn't do it. I got like stage fright. So I was just like, mm, and I gave so him a pressure peck from and then friends. I like ran away. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I don't know how. So I had absolutely no idea how to do it. And so I got really, really nervous. And uh, I probably learned the most about sex and kissing from my, my best friend, Carol who was like, <laughs> she, she was just, she was just very, very open about it. And she was like, yeah, you know, I French kissed my boyfriend. And I was like, oh, wh- what's that like? Like, what, what do you, what do you do? How do you do that? And she was like, oh, well, I guess you just, you know, you kind of, uh, you just kind of go like this and then, and then like he does it back and, and it all kind of works out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sounds, sounds good. What about you, Becky? My parents never gave me like a sex talk that I can remember. Mm. We all just kind of like didn't talk about it. And then I went on birth (laughs) control pretty young for like health reasons. And I remember like while we had never talked about sex before, my mom was very like pro like just because you're on birth control doesn't mean that people are having sex. Birth control should be accessible to everyone. Don't correlate it with sex. Like go care like positive. (laughs) A very I positive experience with that where I don't think a lot of other parents of her generation would probably say the same thing to like a 16-year-old. No. Going oh, Mama to Miller. Home. Mama Miller yeah, was seriously. there for it. Yeah. But yeah, we never really had any talks, but we were a very like media-heavy family. Like we love watching movies and TV. So I would just come in the living room. My mom would be like, oh, you want to watch this show? And it would be like Oprah. It would be Oprah with parents and kids talking about sex. So basically your mom sat you down with just, Oprah. <laughs> we would just sit there and we would watch it. We wouldn't so you really learned, talk about it, but we would sit there and watch it. You learned about sex from Oprah is what you're saying. Probably, probably. And I do remember like we would go to the movies and I must have been probably for both of these movies. I was like 17, 18. No, maybe not 17, maybe 15. Um, but I, the notebook, I went with my mom mm. and she 100% covered my <laughs> And my dad You're did so the funny. same. We went to see Watchmen and there's this like the big blue guy has sex with this woman and it's like to Hallelujah, the song. And my dad yes. was like, oh, oh, no. oh, okay. Is this the time? <laughs> he like kept waiting, waiting and he was like, no, and covered my eyes. <laughs> no. I was like, I am uh, 17. <laughs> I know what okay. they're doing. I know what okay. they're going to do. Did anyone get no, that no. American Girl book that talks about um, kind of not like sex ed, but it talks about like female reproductive system and like period. No, no one got that book. Uh-uh. I feel like a lot of people. I wasn't an American Girl girl. Yeah, my mom bought me a book because I don't think she wanted. Well, she just wanted me to have like more information in case she didn't cover everything. But I specifically remember she taped shut the pe- uh, like the pages where they talk about tampons because like there's like really like she thought it was going to scare me. There was like Uh-oh. pictures Taped of them like shut. Car- she she censored your <laughs> your like growing up sex and I asked book. her why. <laughs> I asked her, I was like, why did you tape those two pages shut? Because like me and my sister noticed. We're like, what is this page about? Let's As cut it open As if you weren't going to notice. Yeah. I know. It was really, it was fun. She's like, I just didn't want to overwhelm you and scare you because it was just about tampons. And I was like, oh, got it. <laughs> okay. I wish someone handed me like a picture book of how to put a tampon in. <laughs> and it just showed you how your body <laughs> yeah. changes. It's It's like how you, like the female your breasts like develop as you grow older and like what pubic hair will start to look like. So in case mm-hmm. like you wake up one morning, you're like, mom, American yeah. girl, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. <sighs> Sounds like a very good book. Says the mom of it two got, girls. It definitely, it got passed down between <clears throat> me and my two sisters. So like 
my yeah. older sister gave it to me and then my I gave it to Ivana, although Ivana claims that she didn't read it. But I feel like when you have all girls too, you can like pass that information down easier. But like having, I have an older brother, so we got different, <laughs> different, different <talks>. schoolings, <laughs> different schools of yeah. thought. I only remember he came home once because we didn't, well, I didn't go to like a Catholic school. We had this thing called CCD that you went to on Wednesdays where if you were like in public school, but you were wanted to get confirm have your confirmation in the Catholic church, you go Wednesday nights mm. and do like religious studies. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember Michael came home once with my older brother came home with like a pamphlet that was specifically about not masturbating, that <laughs> masturbating was bad for you. And then, you know, who never got one of those? The girls. <laughs> the girls never got a book. About it's fine for you. They yeah. were like, women don't, girls don't masturbate. Toilet, so let's not right, give them a right, book. Right. And I remember later in life thinking about it and being like, that's messed up, man. Yeah. The whole well, well, thing number is one, so it's messed, messed up, up to give that to a kid. Yeah. <laughs> you guys grew up with abstinence only education. Did you have any moral qualms like growing into your teens and 20s and 30s, like getting comfortable having sex? Did you feel that way? I don't know. Yeah. I think that because that was like hammered into me at such a young age, I had like a little, I don't know. It took me, I feel like it took me a lot longer than people <clears throat> that I was friends with from other circles. It took, I think it was it took me a bit. Religion? I don't know if it was religion because I don't, I mean, I'm not religious now, um, but I think but it was just like, I lot. felt being yeah. told a lot. I felt like I was doing something wrong or <clears throat> what I was doing was wrong or I don't know. I, yeah. Honestly, I felt like I was behind. I didn't have sex until college. And I I felt like I was a late bloomer. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why why doesn't anybody want to have sex with me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, I I think, you know, <clears throat> just kind of, you, it, it depends on the, the community that you grow up in. You know, mm -hmm. when I was in private school, everybody was having sex. And... And, and I was like, I, well, A, I, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not super comfortable with this. Uh, and then, you know, that like the right person never really came along. And so it wasn't until college that I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This feels comfortable. This feels right. You know, but I yeah. definitely thought that I was behind that, that, yeah. you know, that there was something wrong with me. <clears throat> and yeah. now looking back, are you glad you were in college? Oh, absolutely. Abs I'm so glad that I was in college. I, I feel like I had, I just had a little bit better understanding of what I was looking for, you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and what I wanted yeah. and, and a better <clears throat> understanding of what sex meant to me. Um, you know, I still, I still had no idea, but, um, <laughs> but but a little bit better, you know. I, yeah. I feel like I feel like I wasn't in. I don't know. I wasn't in danger of of kind of um, like turning a sexual relationship into like like a more thinking that that sex was was what love meant. You know mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that that I I could. I could see sex for what it was. I feel like the media too, for kids who are in high school, like even when we were in high school, the kids on TV that were playing high schoolers were like 30 year olds. Right. Sure. Exactly. And on all those TV shows, they were having sex. So you're like, why am I not having sex in high school? Yeah. Right. Like, exactly. I think <laughs> a lot in the children, media, they show like, like children. <laughs> only like most women don't get off by penetrative sex alone but like that's all you see on tv and mm -hmm. and in porn <laughs> i think it's just like as a teenager like how are you supposed to be we're still like finding or getting comfortable with our own bodies and then to like mm -hmm. jump in with somebody else i think i was just very overwhelmed and i was like whoa what's what is all this like this is all yeah. so new i'm yeah when we're seeing like tv shows with that are about high schoolers that are starring mm. 25 to 30 year olds playing these high schoolers. Beautiful 25 these, like, to 30 year olds. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful <laughs> rippling abs, all that. Um, they're just like perfect looking people. And then you see them having this like perfect sex. <laughs> it's like this <laughs> soft, like gentle, like music's playing. I remember in Riverdale once Betty and Jughead had sex and it was like, they're supposed to be 16 at the time, I think maybe 17. And they had the most like beautiful choreographed, almost sex scene. 
And it's just like, <laughs> it's just that it's choreographed. So it puts it in your head that it's supposed to like, it look actually like something is. Or be something. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is what sex is supposed to look like. This is what sex is supposed to look like. When in reality, it's like slapping bodies together and like bodily fluid. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sweaty much more like aw- awkward at times. But for some people, painful. For some people, you know, yeah. like not not this glorious experience. I wish someone had told me when I was like growing up that you're supposed to pee after having sex because how many UTIs you later did you guys do you did you guys start, like not know that growing up? I didn't. Yeah, I did. My mom told me. It yeah. took me one UTI and I was like I think then my doctor was like pee after sex and I was and it's I'm religious about it now. Yeah, I wish that was in sex ed. Also, yeah. if you take azo, it'll make your pee orange. <laughs> yeah, azo, which doesn't even not work. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what's missing too in the education system when you read about like how other schools talk about sex. I forget which country it is, but they in a great New like, Zealand. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, probably New Zealand. Probably Jacinda has a great sex ed program. I know, just but they the- like they put pleasure in there to say that like sex isn't just about procreating it's not just that there's so much more because you know kids are just they're they're learning from watching porn which isn't always the most realistic (laughs) right Right. and sometimes sometimes there's there's good stuff but typically the stuff that we grew up seeing was maybe not the best representation right and for most people the first like decade they're having sex, it's to it's also in the name of avoiding procreation. And only in the next decade are they actually trying to get pregnant and have babies. Um, and so I felt like I never learned anything about fertility other than like abstinence mm-hmm. and you won't get pregnant. But like right. all of that kind of education around not just STDs and ways we can scare kids, but like around fertility and how you're body works and like ways to avoid pregnancy and what your options are and then ways to get pregnant later when you like I just had to learn all that on my own when I was ready right no one teaches you that it would be helpful to learn in the reproductive system like what each stage of them like what's happening during Mm -hmm. your cycle Mm because that's huge that's huge yeah Did I ever tell you guys that uh, before Ned and I got married, so we were engaged and we got engaged very early um, and Ned's mom is uh, is pretty Catholic and she asked us to go to pre-Cana, which is like the the Catholic um, Uh pre-marriage counseling. Almost like therapy, right? Yeah. It's, It's almost like therapy. So we had to go away for a weekend. We went to like a retreat weekend. Um, and you honestly, did it? we did it. We did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, I, we were we were like we were twenty four and twenty three, I think. Uh-huh. Um, and they taught. Um, uh, oh, I like what is the? I I I've never been to like Catholic school or Catholic church or anything like that. But but so so they teach no, uh, you don't take birth control, but you can you can chart your cycle. And that is oh, the, the family form planning. Of birth control. Yeah, family planning, Catholic family, family planning. planning. So, so it was a it was like a three day retreat, and we uh, and I think they spent an entire day, like an entire eight to ten hours, on Catholic family planning, and uh, brought in people to tell us about how to chart your cycle. And so there's there, there's literally probably twelve couples in here, uh, you know, so twelve women, twelve men, and. Um, and there's like a man, an, a, a middle-aged man standing at the front of this, this class saying, you know, like, okay, so when you are ovulating, you're the, the like, like stuff that you produce will be sticky and it will be tacky. Oh. And egg white <laughs> mucus. Egg white yeah. mucus. Yeah. So we have like mm-hmm. a calendar up on the board and he's like, okay, so these two days <clears throat> it's going to be sticky. And this day it's going to be like, you know, it's going to be a little bit more thin. And oh I, that is truly the time that I learned the most about like the female reproductive cycle. It was fascinating. It was fascinating. Yeah. And it was, and it was kind of scary and, believe- and very weird. But Jesus, this man was teaching this. Oh yeah, I want to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "What's your mucus like, sir?" 
<laughs> it was, I, I mean, in, in so many ways, it was the strangest experience I've ever had. And like, we weren't even allowed to, to bunk with our significant others. We were like, it was the women oh. on one side and the men on the other side. Oh, cause it was before marriage. Oh, cause it was before yeah. marriage. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Funny. I had never, I mean, I'd, I'd never been to church. I'd never experienced anything like that, which is probably exactly why, uh, my mother-in-law was like, you need to do this. Um, <laughs> go to church area. <laughs> yeah, go to church. I have to say, I've never been to church like in your this. life. <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have gone to something like that. It was really, I mean, it was, it was, it was strange. It was really strange, especially for me as a person who, you know, I just wanted to make her happy. At that, you know, at that time, I was like, this is the, my future mother-in-law. Like, fine, I'll do it. But I have never learned so much about the female reproductive cycle like it, it was like an eight hour class on exactly Whoa. what happens during which point of your cycle, you know? And yeah. so, and, and then like, you know, women are coming to, to talk about like, okay, so like we had sex on this day. So the mucus was a little bit more like this because it was also mixed with a little bit of male semen. And, you know, it was just, I, I was just like, what is happening right now? What is happening? Whoa, yeah. in a church. Wow. That is like a, yeah. prog- like what church, what progressive church was that? <laughs> well, I, I, it was, it was a Catholic thing. And I, I guess that's wow. just how you learn about Catholic family planning. All in the name of you not taking birth control, which are the safe days to have sex and which are not the safe days to have sex. Oh. Why is birth control a problem? <clears throat> Why is that not okay? I think the Catholics have a different opinion on it, but I think, for, yeah. I mean, for some people, you're also just not taught that there are options other than birth control. Right. For yeah. some people, they have or, great birth control stories. They've had a great time with it, and other people, yeah. horror right. stories. And there's some people that actually use birth control for medical um, yeah. issues besides yeah. um, not getting pregnant. A lot of women take birth control f- to control symptoms of related to a lot um like one of my younger sister she is lesbian but she takes it because she has like horrible horrible clots and cramping so mm-hmm. birth control has actually helped her a lot through all of that i think i started taking it for acne when i was like 16 or 17 my big problem with birth control i think there are lots of good options out there for women that weren't around a long time ago iud's Ooh. um oh yeah but Ooh-hoo. why my big problem is like it's only for women why is there no yeah. birth control that's for men yeah. why is it just on us it's a little because i think some people like birth controls don't work for them um yeah like, it's definitely they don't not a feel good like the mm-hmm. hormones are um you know for for women who are like especially sensitive to like hormonal changes or something like that or you know someone who has a history of uh like breast cancer in their family or something like that, like hormone, you, you can't take them. I'm saying women, I can't take them. I have a history of breast cancer. I'm hormone avoidant and I can't take them. <laughs> and as soon right. as we decide on whether or not we want a third baby down the road, we're getting a vasectomy. I'll be there to yeah. hold his hand. People say the word we got pregnant. So I why know. can't you say we got a vasectomy? We made a yeah. baby. <laughs> No, I made yeah. some babies. No. I am thinking <laughs> there. <laughs> One made it. <laughs> I do wonder, actually, you know, Ned and I were having a conversation about birth control a couple of days ago. Just, uh, I, you know, we were talking about like how old it is or because I think somebody mm. said so, one of maybe my like we were talking on the phone with my parents <laughs> or something and and like my dad said, you know, oh, well, by the time that, you know, Wes is, is, uh, in high school, uh, you'll like, there will probably just be a, like an app where, where you can, you can, where you just press a button and, and you have, and like, you don't make babies, you know? And I was like, I don't know, dad, like birth control is really old. It's like, like we've had the same birth control system since huh. like the fifties, right? Like the the pill yeah. in the circular thing has been mm-hmm. around for a long, long mm-hmm. time, and it hasn't changed. And no. and so it started this it started this big conversation about, you know, why hasn't birth control changed? Why there there have been mm. these massive strides in healthcare, and yet there are still women taking the same birth control pills that were created. 50 years mm-hmm. ago, 70 years ago. 
It's fascinating. Why why aren't there more people out there trying to create birth control for men? Yeah, why aren't they taking circular pills every day? Yeah. It's a silent attack on women. I'm telling it you. Is. It's 2020. It's a total patriarchal system. Uh, I mean, it just it just is. Here, you make babies so you don't get pregnant. You stay abstinent. You track your cycles. You take these hormones and you make sure you don't get pregnant, okay? Right. It's on until us. we need you to get pregnant until you're married and then please right. get pregnant and right. make sure exactly. it's not hard. Make sure your body's yeah. working correctly after you're. <laughs> yeah, because craziness. then I mean, then when we can't make children, when mm-hmm. it is, you know, the time to have children, then when you're not able to, then there's something wrong with our bodies. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, yeah. oh, well, now I have this massive guilt about, oh, well, my body's not working correctly because I mm-hmm. can't create a child. Yeah. What and, is that? And maternal age is such a factor, and they're only just now right. starting to look into paternal age um, right. being a factor. But, um, you know, if you're over 35, they call it a geriatric pregnancy. They yeah. really do. Woof. 35. After geriatric yeah. pregnancy. Tre- geriatric pregnancy. Yeesh. And you're like, oh, rude. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know. I am I am think 35 years old. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am yeah, young I and like relevant. <laughs> yeah, if you think about our grandparents, they were having my grandma had my mom like when she was 20 or like yeah, 19 or 20. And yeah. that wasn't like I feel like if I was 19 and my friend had a baby, I'd be like like you're not really sure if you're supposed to say congrats or like <laughs> like, like are help? you happy about it? <laughs> yeah. Are you happy about the baby? If you're happy, I'm happy. But it still would have been shocking to have like a friend who was 19 and had a baby. Whereas like when our grandparents mm-hmm. were younger, that was not even shocking. That was expected. Yeah. Right. That was the norm. It was. But people had a lot more kids. And uh, I mean, mm-hmm. this is a few generations ago, but like my great grandmothers didn't have careers. They didn't work. They I mean, they worked, but they raised lots of kids. So yeah, circling easy. back to sex education, what is like one thing that you wish you would have learned? P after sex. P after sex. That's a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That should be the first thing. Like bullet points. P after sex. Probably just like sex can, is, is and can feel good. <laughs> like yeah. not just the mechanics of sex, <laughs> but mm-hmm. teaching kids that like, no, 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 you shouldn't be like, <laughs> it, it's supposed to feel good for you. Yeah, I just feel like you spend so much time in your early like sex days being like, I mean, this is fine. So like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I also just think teaching kids that like sex is not just intercourse, you know, sex with yourself. Masturbation is sex. Oral sex is sex. You yes. know, anything that, that you are doing. That was the title doing. of one of those Oprah shows. Is it? Oral, sex, oral, is oral sex, sex is sex. Yeah, that's the one I remember. <laughs> anything you're doing with your bodies that feels intimate and vulnerable and good and exciting is sex. Intercourse oh, yeah. is not like the end all be all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jesus, they should teach gay sex too. They're yeah. only teaching 100%. heterosex in school. They're leaving out this entire population and they should talk about asexuality and how you don't have to have a gender preference. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. I wish they talked more on how heterosex doesn't make you more normal or natural in comparison to other people. And I wish they talked more about consent as well and how mm. consent oh, can yeah, be taken yeah. away at any point. I, I mean, mm-hmm. we probably spent most of our teenage years thinking about sex as intercourse between a man and a woman and Mm -hmm. uh and i at at least speaking for myself i i don't think that i thought about my own pleasure until i was at least in my mid-20s it was it was like it was about like the guy it was about the guy having sex you know it was sort of Mm -hmm. uh I don't know. It it it, it almost like that whole the, the the whole idea of pleasure was not not something that I learned or thought about. Uh, you know, it's it was very much the mechanics of it, and mm-hmm. like okay, so this is how it is done, and and now we are finished. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I hope by the time our kids are grown up, that they are or not grown up, but old enough to be in high school, that there is this like. <laughs> 
broader sex ed that isn't, you know, your health teacher telling you about a mechanical thing between a man, specifically a man and a woman, that there's an actual like, because I feel like it's, yeah, it's just strange because we learned, yeah, I couldn't, I literally couldn't imagine being like a young gay kid or young asexual kid, a young trans kid, any, anything other than the like heteronormative person that I am learning about sex. It, It must be so awful. Like, mm-hmm. you don't learn mm-hmm. anything. Nothing is pertinent to you. Maggie, yeah. what do you wish you had learned? I think that more about consent and more about different sexuality. And then obviously, I, my big one was peeing after sex. And queefing is normal. <laughs> so you don't think your vagina's like falling off. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> that all the noises and all the. All the noises are. All the noises. Listen, are, if you're too embarrassed by like fluids, noises, Mm -hmm. then you're not ready for sex. If you're not comfortable with the person, then you're not ready. And if you're not comfortable with yourself yet, those things, right. Mm -hmm. Or yourself or your own body, like just wait a little bit and it's okay. Yeah, Yeah. It's okay. You have your whole life and you can take your time. Take as long as you want. You have the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. There is no rush. Also, if you are ready, then mm-hmm. there's there's no there's no reason you know like there's no taboo and you might be ready with one person and not ready for anyone else or then not interested in a while it's just like a whole continuum of ebbs and flows of like interest yeah. and readiness and i just think you yeah. really have to like gut check within yourself and that's what we should be learning in school <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How to listen to your own body. When did you guys learn about female, like the actual female genitalia? Did you learn about, like, I remember learning about reproductive organs, but like, mm-hmm. when did you learn what like a labia was or like your clitoris was? Mm-hmm. When I was pregnant. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's yesterday? <laughs> Tell me more, Maggie. <laughs> What's a clitoris? No. Oh, I have a really funny story about clitorises. <laughs> As a very young child, I was in soccer practice and my mom like called Sports Chalet and she's like over the phone. She has a very thick South American accent. She's like, hello, I'm looking for cleats for my daughter. And the person like <laughs> laughed <laughs> at her and hung up. And my mom was like, that was weird. So she goes to the store and she's like, hello, um, I'm looking for clits. And the <laughs> employees just like looking at her was like, what? And my mom likes to what spell things saying? out phonetically because she has such a thick accent. She needs to know how to say it. And she goes to her her office, her like office partner person was like, am I saying this correctly? And she was just like, and they had to write it down for her because she kept mm-hmm. saying clits instead of cleats. That's Aww. like soccer cleats. <laughs> cleats. Hey, listeners, quick little tech note. My mic died towards the end of the podcast, so we'll be using my Zoom audio for the rest of the episode. Sorry about that. Uh, We'll fix it for next time. Now back to the show. I don't think I ever really had like a sit down showing you like this is the actual anatomy of the vagina. But Mm -hmm. my mom was very insistent on telling us like penis and vagina. Those are the names of the anatomical organs that you have. I remember there was Mm -hmm. one time I like went down a slide And my brother came afterwards and he like kicked me in my vagina. And then I loudly told, I was like seven maybe or younger. And I just loudly screamed, he kicked my vagina. (laughs) My mom was like, well, at least you got the word right. You know, know? it's technically, it's technically your vulva though. All right. I was like six, man. It's good that we got vagina in the, instead of like (laughs) Gucci or your, your, your no, no place or whatever. (laughs) Your no, no place. My vagina. No, no, we say vagina. Uh, well, we currently say wee wee uh, for Wes. So you guys are convincing me to uh, change that. Um, Imagine Wes like running around kindergarten going, penis! <laughs> <laughs> they he do. Actually just, he just walked by completely naked and I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> once he was on a little scooter and he was just buck ass naked and he had his little <laughs> foot flipped back like the tiktok kid it's just yes and he was just going zoop, 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 buck naked it was and he had like the slyest little smile and we were all laughing so of course he was only doing it more it was so, <laughs> cute. so oh my cute. god he's he's a little performer he will not like at this point he 
everything that he does is to get a reaction from us. Uh, mm-hmm. Usually like a good one, you know? So right now we've taught him to count to 10. Um, and now every time that he counts to 10, he says 10 really, really loud so that everybody <laughs> in the room will be like, yeah, you did it. Yay. You did it. Aww. And now uh, yesterday we had, uh, we had sushi for dinner and, um, uh, and we've taught him to use chopsticks, which is a very fun thing to do. Actually, when we were in Singapore, I got those little like chopstick for kid things, those little holders. And he loves those things. So he's like using chopsticks to pick up sushi and stuff, but he won't put it in his mouth until everybody watches him do it. Cause like, oh you know, gosh. you have to be like, oh, you got it on your chopsticks. You did it. Good job. And, so, and so yesterday we were all just sitting around chatting and he's holding up his little chopsticks and like shaking it, showing us how he picked it up and the food <laughs> keeps falling out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Wes. Okay. You need full attention from the entire table to eat your dinner. Like, okay, we're going to have to rethink this. <laughs> Yeah. He just needs constant reassurance that he's doing he a good job. Good exactly. job. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. But oh. yes, we call it we call it our wee wee right now. So it's how does your wee wee feel? Are yeah. you, I remember you, being scolded in like preschool because I, I was only allowed to say bottom, not butt. Yeah. What? Bottom. I don't know why. We say tushy. Butt's just not cute tushy. enough when they're little. Tushy. I, tushy. I like tushy. tushy. So cute. I remember when I was growing up, uh, we called farts. We called them foofies. And, uh, called them what? Poofies, poofies. or po- poofies? Poofies. Poofies? poofies? No, like F-O-O-F-Y. Foofy. Foofies. Foofy. Yeah. And so, and so my funny. mom still calls them foofies. Uh, but Ned and I decided, like we had to decide that they weren't called farts, that they're called toots. So, toots. so now toots. it's like, did you toots. make a toot? Was that a toot? And... It, yeah, that's funny. And so that's what we use it. Just because just it's a cute word. Yeah, a foofy. A foofy. Sweet. I say pooted. I pooted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where what? that came from, but that's what we say. <laughs> yeah, when Ned and I Ew. first met, he called farts, he called them poops. I have, really? he just grew up calling, he, a poop was a poop and a fart was a poop. And oh, so, and he, how do you know if you and farted so, or pooped then? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so, so Ned and I are sitting on the couch. I think this was after we moved in together. And he was like, oh, Ariel, I'm so sorry. I just pooped and it smells so bad. And I was <laughs> like, I literally, I almost <laughs> shat like, my pants. I was like, what? <laughs> you shat you yourself? Pooped? And you're you pooped? pooped? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And he was like, no, no, I just, I just, I just pooped a little bit. And I was like, Okay, what? we're still not communicating here. You pooped? <laughs> and you're not mortified? <laughs> I know. He was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did I'm that. I'm so sorry. We had to have a conversation. I was like, okay, we're not calling them poops anymore. You can't do that. <laughs> it really <laughs> freaks me out. Well, those are our stories and experience with sex ed, but leave down <laughs> in the comments below um, your awkward stories, your awkward thoughts when you were younger, and yeah. Let us know what you wish you had learned in school as well. Guys, that's it for this episode of the podcast. You can sit with us. Uh, we love hearing your thoughts. Uh, so rate us five stars and leave us some juicy tidbits in the comments there. Uh, you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple, other places, (laughs) but we do, we do love, love, love hearing your stories and it really gives us a lot to talk about. So, um, if you guys feel so inclined, you can email us at, you can sit with us pod at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>